Red Shark News at NAB 2018 is brought to you by Atomus. Unlock creativity. Black Magic Design, amazing solutions for film, post-production, and television. G Technology, the go-to drives for creative professionals. Frame IO, the collaboration platform for video teams. So this is Dave Shapton from Red Shark, and uh, I'm with Jeremy Young from Atomos. Hi, Jeremy. Hey, Dave. How you doing? Really good, and it's a big day for Atomos. It's a big day for everyone because this is a very significant announcement, isn't it? Yeah, um, I think it's becoming. Uh, we've obviously been involved in it for a long time now. Um, this is the culmination of you know years of work uh, of recording from cameras as as well as you know trying to find a standardisation of of RAW in order to push that technology forward and no better partner for, for that type of development than, uh, than Apple. And, and do you think it was your you know, earlier development with uh, you know, in, in, in embodying uh, ProRes in hardware that allowed, put you in this privileged position to talk to Apple about ProRes, ProRes RAW? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we have long been known as the portable ProRes recorder um, and that's what we did at the beginning and, and we want to continue to do that and that means evolving with the different workflows that are evolving um, in the industry and, and it's, it's pretty obvious that RAW is more flexible in application uh, on the application side in the computer land and it's actually easier to record if it's in the right form but that right form really hadn't come to fruition yet and so we were struggling with, do we take it to video and then you lose the rawness of it? Mm-hmm. Or do we stay in more r- cumbersome formats that are difficult to write to disk and then you have to upgrade your whole infrastructure to data rates that are just outside the kind of mass market, I would say. And I think you've been around us for a long time, Dave, since the beginning of the company. And we're really that 80% of the market. We're not looking for the top end cinema ARRI workflow. They have that nailed um, but we're trying to take the best of that and give it to everyone else because up to now I suppose the problem has been that there, you've had essentially a different workflow for every camera yeah that's correct um, and we did some standardization for that but I think it kind of defeats the purpose of a raw workflow to finish in video um, and that was what people were doing just to unlock the potential of their camera so for example you know some of the amazing cameras coming out of uh, Japan that we uh, and we have to kind of take a hat off to the Japanese companies. Mm. They do sensors and video processing extremely well. Um, and they also give a, a, a very wide range of different types of cameras so that you as a customer can choose whichever one you would like to use. But things like the FS5, really affordable camera, but didn't do 4K60. But the raw output allowed you to do that. So traditionally, in, over the last year or two, that's been the lower end cameras. Um, when I say low end, I mean it's a five grand camera, but compared to their big brothers yep. that are 10 and 15 and 20 yep. grand, um, or even compared to a red type of camera, you know, you're still getting raw from it, but we couldn't really do that justice. We could only go to ProRes and just give them 4K60. And of course, I mean, for people who are watching who, who, who don't really understand the difference, and, and a lot of people are just moving up to the idea that you can work with raw. Yes. Uh, the um, ProRes itself, incredibly flexible format very high quality yes. very processor friendly but all the color values were baked in correct so the camera would do that for mm. us um, and that was the right solution for 10 years ago um, Adamos came onto the scene seven years ago this is our seventh NAB um, 2011 was the first one and the portable ProRes recorder was very relevant then Um, The outputs of cameras were 8 or 10 bits, so we could capture and keep most of what the camera was doing. But since then, the sensors are bigger, the data rates are far greater, um, and the ability of computers to process that data in a a raw form and do more of that processing that the camera used to do, it was necessary for the camera to do that 10 years ago. But it's not necessary for it to do that now. So, you know, because all, all the raw formats have essentially been quite, well, you know, obviously related to each other but yes. but, but essentially proprietary bespoke, if you like yeah. bespoke mm-hmm. what does Atomos do on the way in yes. to standardize it as ProRes RAW okay so we've been um, all the sensors are essentially very similar yeah. they're CMOS sensors that technology came out of Kodak and has been 
refined and improved by mainly Japanese companies, some Israeli companies, some um, industrial sensor companies, Fair, Fairchild of doing some sensors, and but they're essentially very similar um, formats where they have a a, a, a Bayer pattern mm. of red, greens, and blues, mm. um, and they are essentially in the same array um, based on Mr. Bayer's um, research. So we get pretty similar from all the yeah. cameras. Now, the nuances of how they process that and the nuances of how they then get to a good image is definitely related to each each maker. But that's where our relationship with those makers means we already have that information. And then on the other side, so then we, we approached Apple to say, hey, would you guys be interested in giving us you know a standard to go to rather than having to convert all of this into a video standard and we think there's some big advantages to that because customers were asking can I stay in raw so the, the beauty is we already were encoding ProRes from these raw standards so we were doing a lot of the processing required and then we were making decisions the camera was making and therefore limiting that create creative spin on the video footage so to stay in raw what do we do we pack it up exactly the same way no matter which camera comes and then we take those RGB values um, and we mix and match them together in the format that is Apple's format and their algorithm geniuses have sat there for many, many years now understanding how video works and have just applied their knowledge to a raw, separate RGB value system rather than ones that have already been combined yes. together in a pixel, which is what standard video is, yes. where they've taken that and turned so, it into a, a so, video so pixel. What I'm wondering is, is um, when uh, let's say you're in an NLE yes. now, you've yes. got you've got ProRes raw in an NLE. Yeah. Yes. Do you have to tell that NLE what the original camera was? Is there any metadata that's passed from the there camera? There is metadata to... passed from the camera into the file, and you'll notice on our ProRes raw landing page, which is atomus.com/slash/ProRes raw, where we we give probably more information about how it works mm. with the camera and then into the edit suite, whereas Apple's definitely focused on how it works in the computer mm, side. Mm. And those two worlds are very separate. And we're trying to push more and more to the computer world where there's a lot more processing power to make adjustments to the image in real time. And w our focus is to take high speed sensor images and put them onto a disc in a very efficient way. Um, and then obviously give you all the tools to set it up properly, like the camera has, but it's on a smaller screen. So we're, we're kind of bridging those two worlds together. That's we, where we see our, our path, is bridging the camera to the, to the imaging world, uh, to, sorry, the computer to the imaging world. So in a scenario where you might be uh, shooting with three different types of camera, all outputting RAW, RAW. all being captured into ProRes RAW, yes. uh, and then you have these on the timeline. Yes, then you will know which camera it came from, but they'll be behaving the same way yeah. in the application. So that's fantastic, right? So you know it's a Vericam LT. You know that it's a, a Sony FS7 Mark II, right? And you... And you you know that those two formats will behave the same on the timeline, will scrub the same, mm. will play together nicely, and that's unheard of for raw formats. Mm. They were always very, very proprietary. And actually, it was unheard of until ProRes, originally in video, yeah. where we had all these MPEG formats, and oh, I recorded in this new camera from Canon that Apple haven't supported yet, or that Adobe haven't supported yet, and then we'd have to wait for that update to come before we could use our yeah, camera properly. And then ProRes kind of took on a life of its own with uh, uh, post-production requesting yeah. uh, stuff in give ProRes. Us one, yeah. Give us one format, please. I mean, it makes so much sense, but to actually mm. achieve it mm. and to go through those scenarios is a big effort. And, you know, I think we all need to thank Apple for that development work. So, uh, of course, um, I was just going to say that it's in the 24 hours since this has been announced. Yes. A lot of people have asked me, how is this different from Cinema DNG? Yes, yes. So um, it is different because it is a. Um, it's not individual frames that are packed up like a photo. You know, Cinema DNG does come from that photo yes. world, and then there's a lot of them put together. So they're quite cumbersome um, to deal with. Although a great format, you know, I don't want to take away mm. from from the things that Adobe do very well. Um, but in terms of standardizing a video workflow and having it be a lossless compression, it is really raw in a video file um, that behaves like a video file all the way through, but you get the benefits of raw. I think it's a, an amazing solution. 
Um, and the difference is we're not dealing with frame by frame individual files. We're dealing with a whole video package mm. that has metadata in it, that the application can read, that you can apply and transform each pixel into video to see in whatever way you want to. And I think it's extremely flexible the way that they've set it up and into the future, I believe you'll be seeing bespoke high quality plugins probably from camera makers to help assist the user yeah. to get to a better result. Um, and you'll, and I, I definitely think you'll see the ecosystem of ProRes RAW, which we will support mm -hmm. long term, evolve for other NLEs and for servers down the chain to read it back and... Yeah. and so, so if we could just talk about Atomos products for a while, yes. which Atomos products are going to support this? Yeah, so Shogun Inferno and Sumo 19 support it. They're the only ones with the processor capability. To, we would have loved to have put it on the older mm. products, but we just couldn't. Mm. Or if we could, we could say it would be only these formats and it kind of the message gets a little bit skewed. Mm. Um, so it's Inferno customers and Sumo customers. There's about 50,000 of those guys out there right now which is a huge number considering yeah. how long those products have been out, only a couple of, a year and a half and a, like only a year for, for Sumo. Um, but to be able to get that upgrade, we're giving that for free to all of those mm. 50,000. Um, and it, it also shows you that the efficiency of ProRes RAW is that we can do what we can't do. You think about, you asked the question in Cinema DNG. Well, we were limited to 4K30. Yes. 4K60 because of the size of Cinema DNG and each one of those individual frames made it that we would have to go to PCI Express Disk, which then ups the cost for the customer. We have to change our product mm. from the SATA standard that we had. Well, now you don't need to do that. You can stay in the SATA yeah. world, stay in the current commodity drive world, yeah. and re still record raw. It's, it's almost miraculous that all of a sudden existing equipment can work with raw. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's the beauty of the technology industry, right? And we're, yeah. we were, we're humbled and very lucky to be able to work with the likes of the algorithm guys in the ProRes team. Um, our focus is that real time in the field and theirs is to make it smooth and easy in the computer end to end. So they're, you know, Apple-esque, when they told us what the messaging was, the performance of ProRes with the flexibility and power of RAW, those two things kind of sum it all up, whichever way you want, flexibility, moving it around like a ProRes file, um, oh, sorry, like a RAW file, where you really do get mm. to push colors mm. and brightness and different things. And, and the problems that come from trying to produce HDR in both um, color and brightness um, manipulation, you really don't want to bake that in. No. You want to keep that open no, no. for the user at the end. And I think this will enable the HDR workflow. So just briefly, while we uh, wind up, what, what about software support? Um, software support is in Final Cut Pro X, their new version, as you know, that they've announced that. Um, and probably one of the, our proudest days is to have a Shogun sitting there next to a MacBook yeah. in, in the launch yeah, yeah. picture. Um, Are you reasonably confident that the, uh, the other big NLEs will pick this up? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, personally, I am, and after being in the industry for a long time, I think that, would, one, they probably won't have a choice, but two, I think they're probably sick of working with files that are really difficult to mm. manage as well. Mm. Um, Again, all due to respect to the, what Cinema DNG has been able to do for the raw workflow, um, there is a better solution out there now, uh, and I think all of them will want to support that. Uh, obviously, there's the benefit of being part of the initiation of an ecosystem, which we would like to enjoy for a period of time with Final Cut. And Final Cut, you know, I think has received an unduly bad rap for some of the the feature sets that were yeah. or were not implemented a few yeah. years ago when they announced Final Cut 10. But I think this shows their commitment to it. The closed captioning is really important for a lot of the broadcasters that were using Final Cut 7 and want to upgrade to 10. And I think you'll see that Final Cut's customer and Atomos's customer are very similar in that they're going for that 80% of the market mm. from the DSLR guy right through to just under Hollywood. Um, and that's our market. We aren't making raw monitors and recorders for our land. You know, we are seriously trying to take that workflow, give as much as we can in technology, in computer pro processing, to give that, that type of workflow in a very easy way to the customer. So Final Cut supported today. We support it. We don't go up in drones, so DJI was the other partner. And in typical Apple style, there's a, you know, a focused development effort from a few people who 
they trust and and we're lucky to be part of that but as time goes on you know i'd say by ibc you're probably seeing a lot more software being opened up and probably by the end of the year there'll be more hardware opened up but if we keep that message tight for the next six months we can show that this workflow is really the amazing Val validate thing. the whole thing absolutely and i think that's a really important part of producing a standard for the industry right when we jumped on the prores recording bandwagon it was to make it portable that's why they gave mm. it to us it was a vision of what we could do in the field with this format and we delivered that exactly as we said and then we've evolved that product line well it's natural because of that success that apple would approach us to be the initial launch partner but we have we want to fit into a standard we want we understand the customer on the other side needs something that isn't proprietary that works across multiple software and hardware. And so we aren't exclusive to ProRes Raw. We're the launch partner mm. and we're part of the initial ecosystem drive into different market segments. But we'd be happy for our competitors to get it after a little bit of time, give us a chance to sell a few units. But we're happy for that ecosystem to grow. Um, and the Final Cut team, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, will want that chance to get their customer mm. into the raw workflow, mm. but are probably won't be disappointed if more Macs are sold with other <laughs> NLEs on them, right? So the goal is to really give the best computer workflow. And, and I think the Mac, the latest Macs, the iMac Pro, we've been using it for a while with this format is spectacular yeah. and will help drive that um, resurgence of the Final Cut Apple workflow. Okay, fantastic, Jeremy. Uh, good luck with the launch at the show. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. It's a big day. It is a big day. <laughs>